Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Acer Swift 3. Um, this is a Swift SF314-51, right? SF314-51-57 CP. Alright, so I believe the customer already opened this up, but yeah, here you can see Swift 3. Okay, so we're going to be using a J1 or JS1 or PH1 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. So the way you do that, put them flat side down like that on your desk in the pattern you remove them. So we got three here, one on either side, and then we got four down here. All right, since the customer already uh, took this apart, then the cover might not come out the same way that it would on a one that hasn't been opened before. So keep that in mind. If this comes out easily, then um, maybe some clips are broken or something. Anyways, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Other than that, let's go ahead and continue getting this thing apart. All right, so we got all the screws out. Next, usually what I do is I get my fingernails in the gap there, and then I'm going to push with my thumb back here and see if the clips pop out. And it seems like it's popping out easily. So, again, I don't know if that's because the customer already opened this or not, because I do see, like, excuse me, some bends in the casing here. I don't know if you can see that, but, yeah. All right, so you can see it popped out really easily, okay? So just like that, and then we got to the back here. Usually what I do is I'll kind of get my hand over here, push down over here, and I'll kind of wiggle, and you can see it popped out really easily. All right, now we're stuck with that. There we go. That's what it looks like inside. Okay, so um, the main thing the customer wanted was for me to see if their data is retrievable. Um, I believe their drive is completely dead, but we're going to open it up anyways and take a look. Uh, here's for a thumbnail. You can see the battery model here. Battery has this like wing connector that you kind of just grab and wiggle and pull out. I'm not going to be taking this whole thing apart. I'm just going to be pulling the SSD out, but here you can see the battery model. AC14B8K. If you need to remove the battery, there's a screw here and here. Um, and then it looks like after that, you can lift this up and pull it out. There are little feet that kind of tuck under these little things here so you do have to lift up from this side and then pull it this way and make sure you disconnect the battery first after disconnecting the battery <coughs> it's always a good idea to open the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power if you're going to be messing around with the screen cable connector here or anything um, or if you're not sure what you're doing all right uh it looks like there might be a slot for ram under this little cover let's see if we can even pop that out all right, there's a CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. Um, and then the red wire is going to the left and the black wire is going to the outside of the computer. So make sure if you're going to be opening your laptop or, and replacing that battery that you plug it in the right way. Uh, same thing with the main battery here. Red wires are going out towards the outside and then the black wires are going towards the middle. So make sure you don't um, flip that connector upside down. All right, so I undid those two screws. Let's see if we can pop this bottom cover off, but it might be attached to the heatsink, so maybe not. Um, but I kind of just want to see if I can get underneath there. Wow, this connect, this cover is like difficult to get underneath. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more here. <coughs> and it might be this whole thing is attached for the heatsink. Maybe there's no replaceable RAM here. I kind of just want to see if I can get slightly under this somehow but it's not looking like it's gonna be doable okay I see we have this cover maybe I can use a little needle in that little gap in the corner there and see if I can somehow pop that up so I'm gonna use a little thumbtack I can get in the corner there and kind of pull on it okay that did lift it up slightly Let's see if I can get my fingernail under now I can Okay, oh, this is gonna be difficult. Let's see. Okay, so that cover is coming out. And we're gonna go over there. All right, oops, sorry. Going out of view for you guys. But there we go, we lift that up. Okay, we're gonna go all the way around. So we're gonna go around here and hopefully we can pop this up. There we go. 
Okay, it looks like the LCD LVDS cable is attached and no, there's no removable RAM, it's soldered. Also, the CPU is soldered to the motherboard and you can have access to the heat sink uh, screws now. Um, I'm just gonna put this back down. Okay, if you don't know what you're doing, it's a lot safer to do this after disconnecting the battery and then pressing holding the power button. All right, so this kind of thing, since you're messing with this metal box, um, you probably would want to do that. All right, anyways, there we go. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get these screws back in. It looks like you can't really do anything with that. So I'm just gonna quickly go over what components I see in here and then we're gonna remove the SSD and I'm gonna see if I can get the data off. If not, we're just gonna put it back together. So here's the LCD LVDS connector here, all right? There's some tape holding it in place, okay? After you peel that up, you can pull this back. Um, you can also, I guess, remove this cover and slide that back instead of peeling this off. You got the DC jack or charge port connector here going underneath the, <clears throat> the hinge. So if you need to take the charge port out, you do need to undo these screws and then lift up the hinge slightly. Um, usually the easiest way to do that is you open the laptop slightly so you can have a little gap there, okay? Then undo the screws, then when you slowly, carefully close it down, you'll have a gap. But be careful because you don't want the hinge to hit this and then rip that off. All right, uh, what else? You got the, this is most likely the touchpad trackpad connector. There's a little flip latch here. You flip that, you can pull that cable out. You do have to take the battery out. Keyboard backlight connector, same thing, flip latch. You got the keyboard connector here. This has a little sliding latch that you slide down on both sides, and then you can pull that cable out. You got this little cable, actually, is this the touchpad? I don't know. I'm not taking the battery out. Oh, I think this is the fingerprint reader. Okay. <clears throat> All right, then you got this big long cable going from the daughter board here to the motherboard. There's a USB three port, headphone jack, or 3.5 millimeter jack, and the SD card slot. All right, um, you got the speaker cable going underneath. Looks like it's going under this area here, but um, yeah, let's see. SSD, that's the only thing we need to get out, so I'm not gonna be messing with all the other stuff, sorry. But we'll get that screw out and this screw out. Oops, sorry. This screw out. Now that we got those two screws out, we should be able to lift this up. Oh, actually it's trapped under here, so I guess we do need to take this cable out anyway, so we'll peel that out. Carefully peel this up and out of the way. Let's actually flip this latch and then take this all the way out. All right, so now we got access to the SSD. We're gonna lift it slightly. Um, I guess this piece kind of will come out, but you can try and like get it all together if you want. I'm gonna do that. There we go, there's the SSD. And this piece just slides off. So M.2, PCIe, NVMe, SSD. This is an Intel SSD. You can upgrade to any uh, M.2, PCIe, NVMe, SSD. That's this the usual length. <clears throat> here you can see the speaker connectors here and then you have the fan connector here and here so there's two fan connectors underneath the wireless antennas wireless card is right there all right not really much else to show inside there I'm gonna test the SSD then we're just gonna reassemble it um, but yeah sorry I'm not doing a complete disassembly the computer still turns on so it's not dead I'm gonna use this little um, M.2 to USB adapter I'm pretty sure this drive is dead. Intel makes really bad SSDs. They're always failing, especially the Intel Optane stuff. So <clears throat> if your computer has an Intel SSD, I'd say um, switch it out as soon as you can. Um, I don't know if their new stuff is better, but so far I've been seeing so many of these fail. Um, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and test this SSD. I'll be back and see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So it looks like the drive really is dead. Um, I guess I need to find out if the customer wants me to leave that in or put it back. Um, yeah, so the drive, it'll show up. The partition shows up as raw. In Linux, it showed the partition for a few seconds and then it disappeared, so it's dead. All right, I'm gonna see what the customer wants to do, then we'll put it back together. All right, so my customer wanted me to reassemble it or put it back in, so we're just gonna go ahead and put it back. So we'll slide this, well, actually, let's put this back on first. Okay, line it up, get that in. Slide this thing back over it. Okay, get that lined up. <coughs> Oops, let's zoom in, sorry about that. Okay, make sure it's lined up. Get that screw in. 
All right, get this screw in. And then we'll get this cable back in. All right, the MB side goes to the motherboard here. Make sure it's all the way in, slide your finger over to latch it, and then the SUB or sub goes to the sub board here or daughter board. Okay, get that in, and then slide your finger over. There we go, all reassembled. We just gotta get the bottom cover back on. Since they're not actually fixing this, then no point cleaning the dust out. So let's go ahead and just put the bottom cover back on. All right, so we'll get that back on there. Put that all in there, and then clip it all into place. All right, and get the screws back in, and that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well uh, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Oh, one other thing. There's a little hole here. That's a battery reset hole. So if your computer's having issues just booting up or powering on, um, you can try using like a folded out paper clip or a pin, uh, semi eject tool or whatever fits in there. Press and hold that. You'll feel it click. Hold it for about 15 seconds and then try and power it back on. And yeah, if you're lucky, sometimes that'll fix the issue. All right, so that's pretty much it. Last two screws and pretty much done. All right, last one. <clears throat> all right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.